This is Pulse 95. Pulse 95. It's the Morning Majulus. It's the Morning Majulus. Well, world leaders, they have convened at the United Nations headquarters in New York for the first time in two years. That was yesterday with a formidable agenda of escalating crises to tackle, including the still uh, obviously raging COVID-19 pandemic and a relentlessly warming plan as well. That's uh, uh, with climate change um, uh, on the uh, agenda to discuss. Uh, so this is the 76th UNGA meeting uh, and this this was uh, it was the the US the US president Joe Biden has addressed uh, the the meeting and stated that by ending the war in Afghanistan US is swapping relentless war with relentless diplomacy that's what he said the the, the, Democrat, the Democrat also committed 10 billion dollars to end world hunger he called for support from multilateral institutions like the United Nations to help combat challenges, including the Indo-Pacific as well. And uh, when, it, when, uh, when, when it came to the subject about the amid growing tensions between China and the U.S., President Joe Biden also stated that he said, we are not seeking a new Cold War where the world is divided. U.S. is ready to work with any nation that pursues peaceful resolutions because we have all suffered consequences of our failure. Yeah, and uh, member states uh, in the United Nations General Assembly addressed two challenges for the most part, uh, one being the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, how to go about doing this, and also redefining the post-pandemic global economy. Uh, for instance, uh, Peru's president spoke on these issues and also spoke on the country's commitment to tackle climate change. Now, in the backdrop of this, uh, President uh, Joe Biden from the United States and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson also had a meeting at the Oval Office so where they also discussed uh, the topic of climate change. And uh, Biden said earlier today, I, I addressed the UN General Assembly and I made clear the climate has to be the core area of action for all of us. And he said our economies have to work together and create world initiatives like the one we launched in Cardiff Bay as well. While Johnson discussed a new trilateral partnership between the US, Australia and the UK to help Australia get those nuclear powered submarines, but Boris Johnson said, quote, it has great potential to benefit the whole of the world with security. Yeah, and uh, that's also a, a very key uh, take from the uh, the UN General Assembly. It's amazing to see that the world leaders have actually met this time round uh, in person as well. And uh, we're really, really looking forward to what the outcome of these uh, meetings are going to be. And of course, the, the key topic that is set to dominate uh, the agenda is the developments in Afghanistan. To an extent that the, the, the group, which has also uh, nominated their uh, the, 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 the portfolio for ministers, has now asked uh, Sohail Shaheen, the soft-spoken uh, Doha-based uh, representative of uh, the group, to address the UN General Assembly, as he was nominated as Afghanistan's uh, UN ambassador. Uh, so this is going to be an interesting one. But so far, it appears that the deadline or the approvals uh, to, to get this organized may have passed and uh, the, the group may not have uh, their, their spokesperson address it. But so far, what we do understand is a request has been made to the United Nations. Yes, indeed. And uh, looking at uh, other statements made at the UN General Assembly, we've got uh, South Korean President uh, Moon Jae-in calling for a resumption of talks between North Korea, South Korea, and North Korea and the United States. He said, I call for a speedy resumption of dialogue. And he hopes the power of dialogue and cooperation will foster peace in the peninsula. France said it will not change its UN uh, plans uh, following that submarine deal where the government recently said that it felt betrayed when Australia pulled out as well. Uh, so we're also expected to see France uh, give an address. Uh, China's uh, President Xi Jinping also gave a pre-recorded speech uh, saying China would never invade or bully others and highlighted the need for inclusive growth, mutual solidarity, mm. and uh, said that China will reach peak coal consumption by 2030 and go carbon neutral by 2060 
and provide developing countries with $3 billion in COVID-19 and economic relief as well. So a lot of, a lot of climate talk in this uh, General Assembly. A lot of talk in general from all, all the, uh, the, the, the members who participated in this meeting. Um, Brazil's president as well, Jair Bolsonaro, issued a strident defense of his administration at the UN General Assembly, rebuffing criticism of its handling of the uh, pandemic and touting uh, the, the, the recent um, uh, data as well, um, indicating less Amazon deforestation. Uh, so his presence at the General Assembly itself was something of a provo- uh, provocation as he flouted the requirement for all uh, uh, attendees to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, he was infected actually with the virus last year and he said he has uh, said several times over the last weekend he remains unvaccinated and that getting a shot is a personal medical decision. He said by November everyone who chooses to be vaccinated in Brazil will be attended to. That's according to Bolsonaro and he did say that we support vaccination. However, our government has opposed vaccine passports or any obligation to get a vaccine. So that's on vaccine talk. Yes, of course. And I'm looking at the agenda at the moment uh, in terms of who is going to be speaking today. It was, they call it the uh, the the sixth uh, plenary meeting uh, this morning that's going to take place. Is We're going to have uh, the King uh, of Jordan also delivering a speech and uh, the, uh, the address as well as uh, uh, the custodian of the two holy mosques, uh, His Majesty King Salman uh, bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the, the King of Saudi Arabia, uh, is going to have a pre-recorded address uh, today and uh, looking at uh, Barham Saleh. He's going to be doing it uh, tomorrow and uh, so many discussions to look forward to. I was literally trying to look when uh, the Canadian Prime Minister is speaking now that we have a decision made that it is going to be in fact Justin Trudeau who will continue his role as uh, the Prime Minister of Canada. So we'll shift our focus to that up next and discuss the Canadian elections and uh, what they meant to the world and uh, why uh, do we have a situation where it's a slightly weaker government system for Justin Trudeau. All of this will be broken down and discussed here on the Morning Majlis. Entertainment Headlines. Entertainment Headlines. Entertainment Headlines. This is... This is... The Buzz. This is The Buzz, and it's all about movies, and it's all about making sure that everyone is uh, going to try and try and watch different films in the cinemas. There's a huge lineup of movies that are going to be turning up, and uh, I did something different like yesterday I, I i tried to go the extra mile uh, have you guys done fine dining in cinemas before yes fine dining you have in cinemas yes. what's yes. that about so yeah. basically, basically they have a um and the recliner yes on the recliner <laughs> it's like first class <laughs> yeah it is you're flying first class and you're watching a movie and uh, i tried what they call a theater experience and uh, they normally have been partnering with different uh, chefs but yesterday was akira back and he's a he's a Michelin star chef, and he's and it, 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 on the, on the palm uh, they've got the uh, the cinemas there, and uh, he's he's got the menu offered in that cinema. So basically, it's like he's sat in leather seats, right? The food, yeah. like really flashy food and really fine dining cuisine, is offered to you, and you sit back and enjoy a movie uh, and have the food. And I, I, the fact that I like that they've introduced the, this cuisine is because some people really love Asian cuisine. Especially yeah, for fine dining. That's true. For a person like me, I it's love. It's so associated fish. with fine dining. Yes, like exactly. Like if you if you want to do fine dining, it's like Asian. Yes. Yeah. Japanese. Japanese <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So and this this is what it was yesterday. So I watched uh, Shang Chi. Mm. Uh, the uh, the the. How Marvel. was it? It was amazing mm. because. I, I I missed out on watching it when it was first released, and uh, this time round, uh, with with this experience and you know being the spouse's birthday month, you want to go all out and <laughs> yeah. uh, and have a nice uh, experience. So she loved it. You know she loved the food, and uh, for me was watching the movie itself. Uh, it, you know t- to balance because I'm so used to eating popcorn like yeah, a common yeah, yeah. person <laughs> to be given fine dining food all I cared about was not making sure that I don't drop the food on myself because it's so dark in the cinema <laughs> uh, but the movie itself was great I think uh, I love the fact that there was a bit of inclusivity because mm. you, know, you always see Captain America you see Spider-Man being superheroes but to see someone 
you know, of Asian descent as mm-hmm. a superhero. It's but just like Milan as well. It it, it made, uh, you know, it, it, it there was a bit of a connection to it. So I loved that movie. I, I don't know if if you guys seen it, but uh, uh, yeah, actually, our listener Aaron texted uh, oh. talking about the v- same movie. He said, "I recently went to the cinema. I watched Marvel's Shang Chi." Yeah. He said, "Quote: I was blown away. Such a great representation of Asian culture, and it was so great." to see an Asian superhero in such a massive franchise. The story and the visuals were also impressive, and I'm glad I watched it in IMAX. Can't oh, wait uh, for Dune and James Bond as well. Oh, got to do yep. it. And I watched it with uh, with the, this new uh, Akira Back Cuisine, so I was, I was quite amazed with... I, I felt so culturally connected. <laughs> I was like, I'm watching an Asian movie with Asian food. It was yeah. great. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, you know, with, with the world of cinemas, how this they're, they're changing is... Uh, you know, people are appreciating uh, appreciate the cinemas a lot more now because back during the pandemic, when the cinemas were shut and we only had to watch either old movies or Netflix and 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 uh, and Amazon Prime's, for example. But when they've opened up, it just feels like you really want to treat yourself a bit more. So, there's a couple of films that are coming out. Um, in terms of Shang-Chi review, our colleague Sama Mata, uh, she said that <laughs> it, it was too much, you know, as, as, she, as she said, because it was a lot of action. But uh, in terms of more action, uh, I'm a big fan of... Sama's uh, yelling back there, yeah, by really? the way. Okay. She disagrees with your characterization of her uh, views <laughs> on the her film. Her voice yes. as well. She's rolling her eyes. <laughs> and, her, and her accent. She does not have that accent. She does not have that accent. <laughs> we'll have to clear that up after the segment. Okay, so she said it was just too much of action. So <laughs> yeah. now... Um, I'm look, really looking forward to James Bond. I think yes. that that would be my next big film to to catch Daniel in the cinemas. Yeah. Uh, what else do you think is out there? Yeah, there's Dune. Uh, I think it's a okay. movie a lot of people have been looking forward to. It's been delayed a whole bunch of times, uh, but uh, it's essentially a sci-fi uh, type movie. It's set in a unique setting. It's sort of a desert uh, setting as well, and it's going to get into a lot shadowy power and politics in the backdrop of a unique setting as well colonizing planets and such so if you like that sort of myth making and uh, space opera vibes then i think dune is going to be the one to look out for it's coming out late october i'll be there there's there's so many other movies as well that's uh, that's you know i'm i mean in terms of netflix i think uh you season three is also coming out in october that's what i understand uh and the the money heist apparently was split in two parts. How was the money heist? Oh, it was so good. Really? I, I was very hooked onto it. I had to mm. binge it. I think that's the only show that I've been able to binge watch mm-hmm. uh, uh, recently. So that is something that I was uh, uh, very geared up for. But apparently they're, they're split into two parts. Um, Did you ever watch The Sopranos? No. Oh, I love that show. Uh, yeah, no. well, now... Apparently, we're going to be seeing uh, a prequel to The Sopranos. Oh. Uh, it's called The Many Saints of Newark. So basically, Tony Soprano, which is one of the greatest characters in TV history, he is again going to get an origin story in this prequel of uh, or to The Sopranos that uh, aired on HBO Max. So in the 1970s, a teenage uh, they, you will sh- they will show you a teenage Tony uh, growing up in this area of uh, or city of Newark, where his uncle vies for power and shows him the ropes and leads leads the way for him. Uh, and Michael uh, Gandolfini steps into his father's uh, his father James iconic role. Mm-hmm. So I'm just excited to see this prequel to The Sopranos. Yeah, it's, this it's, is going to be exciting. It's actually coming on October first. I'm going to be there. I'm going to watch that as yeah. well. Uh, they also they got the Marvel movie. There's a lot of hype about Eternals. It's going to come yes. out in November. You're going to see Angelina Jolie back as a superhero again. Uh, so that's going to be pretty fantastic as well. And it's also going to be directed by Oscar-winning. O- Chloe Zhao uh, as well. She recently won for Nomad Lancer. She's going to bring her delicate oh. and precise uh, filmmaking style to it as well. So uh, also Kumail Nanjiani is in it, and he looks absolutely muscular. He looks completely different this time around. So I think it's got a star-studded cast. I can't wait to watch it. Ghostbusters Afterlife coming November 11th as well. Let's not forget the James Bond movie. Mm, oh yeah, too many movies to look forward to. Ready. Well, really hyped up for it. And uh, do let us know in the text lines 4215 which movie are you excited for and if you're looking forward to it. And if you've recently watched a movie in the cinema, I'd like to you know, try out a, a bit of a review and let us know on the text lines 4215. Uh, um, and uh, we are appreciating everyone's thoughts. I'm really... 
I, I, well, shout out to Um Faisal. I'd like to get Um Faisal <laughs> uh, to to share her thoughts and if if she does go to the cinema. But uh, uh, but so far um, we are uh, we are planning on uh, the business news headlines right now for the time being. We will be back right after that. We'll continue the discussions. And up next, we talk to you uh, about Sharjah Out Foundation, also uh, discussing and calling, uh, announcing a call for the Focal Point competition. And uh, we will then wrap up the show with the latest from the UN General Assembly. This is the Morning Majlis. Stay with us. We'll be back after the business news headlines. If you liked this episode of the Morning Majlis, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Bubbles.